so today we are going to talk on pyramidal weakness so before talking about pyramidal weakness uh, um, i like to say, uh, say you that in upper limbs uh, this uh, flexor is stronger compared to elbow extension you can test your muscles of your hand as well you can check that the, you you use flexors more often than extensors that's why the flexors in upper limbs are more powerful compared to extensors here you can see the force required to break the uh, fully flexed elbow is about uh, 254 and it is uh, lower on the extensor so uh, that's why uh, the uh, from this figure you can also see that flexors are more powerful in upper limbs but this is exactly opposite when you compare to lower limbs in lower limbs flexors are weaker uh, your hip flexors, your knee flexors are weaker when you compare to extensors because uh, those extensors groups of muscles are more used and that's why they become more powerful compared to flexor groups of muscles. And in uh, pyramidal weakness, mean to say that in the lesions of internal capsule, what you can observe that uh, mm, uh, this uh, in upper limbs, these flexors uh, groups of muscles are uh, less affected compared to extensors. I mean to say that there is more extensor weakness compared to flexors because flexors are already stronger when compared. So the less powerful group of muscles are more affected. The same thing is written. Here you can in upper motor lesions, uh, extensors are affected more than flexors in upper limb but this is exactly opposite in when you compare to the lower limbs in lower limbs i already told you that hip flexors hip uh, mm, knee flexors those are weaker compared to the hip uh, extensors and uh, knee extensors and uh, that's why mm, the flexors are more affected in lower limbs when you compare to extensors and uh, this helps in localizing the lesion uh, in the central nervous system this feature um, I mean to say that lesions in internal capsule compared to uh, versus peripheral uh, NMG or peripheral neuropathy like those